world is always ready for a fight, always ready to live from jealousy and self-ambition. It is always ready to teach you to put yourself first and to step on whoever you have to to get to where you're going. But the teacher shows us a different path, a path that leads you further and further into the world he alone can open to you. When you aim to cooperate with others, seeing all people around you as worthy of dignity, then your own value and dignity will shine brightly into the world. And when those fighters and haters look to take you on, to fight against you for not being like them, then know that their animosity can only drive you deeper into the kingdom and further down the path of the teacher. The way of the teacher can be hard at times, but you will please him best when it costs you something to keep following him. And you will understand the more you live like him, living by what he says, the more you open the door of his world to the world around you so that others can finally see your teacher and want to follow him too. Hey church, this is our second week not meeting together and it's been a very intense week. It's hard to predict this kind of stuff and how, how bad it's getting. Um, but I just want to let you know that we are praying. We are standing together in faith. Even though we can't gather together, we are uh, in arms spiritually and lifting each other up. I just want to speak a word of, of love and truth to each of you today, wherever you're joining in. If you're on your own or you're with family or friends, I just want to let you know we're going to make it through this, that God is bigger than this. I know that sounds cliche, but that's the truth that we're holding on to, that He is far bigger than we can imagine and that nothing is impossible for Him. And the church through generations has been through all sorts of challenges. And this is a big challenge for humanity, a big challenge for the church, a big challenge for our, our country and for our city. And so we are uh, very mindful that this is a unique time, but that's why we, we need to run to God's word. We need to run to him in this time. And so I just pray, even now, the Holy Spirit would fill you with a great peace, that we don't just talk about peace, but we know his presence is peace. Right now, where you're sitting, I just believe that God's gonna fill you with a great peace. Even as we're in this studio filming this, I just believe that we're not going to be overwhelmed by fear. The passage that we're focused on today, I think is really pertinent. It's all about prayer. We've been going through the Sermon on the Mount and Jesus saw the great crowds and multitudes coming towards him and his heart broke for them. He had compassion for them. And I think his heart breaks for us now. We are like sheep without a shepherd. We're being led by fear and the media and entertainment, and all sorts of things. But we need to be led by the great shepherd. Think of Psalm 23. He leads us beside still waters. He makes us lay down in this time. Let's let him be our great shepherd so we're not in want. We know that he's going to provide all of our needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Colossians 1.9 says, So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. What a great scripture in this time. We've not stopped praying for you, church. We'll be praying and fasting every day. We're believing that God will answer our prayers, that he will make a way where there seems like there is no way. Prayer is so important in this time because it connects us to the wisdom and understanding of heaven, whether it's daily decisions on how to get groceries into your house or what you do with the, the test for coronavirus or how do you uh, look after your kids or how do you deal with stuff at work, whatever you're facing, let's ask God for wisdom on a way through. It's so important for us to unpack this passage and ask Jesus, teach us how to pray. So often we're praying almost in a spirit of anxiety and I've done that many times. I've been doing it this week, full of anxiety, but let, let his peace overwhelm us. Let his peace be your umpire. Let's really understand that Abba Father has a great storehouse, that in that secret place of prayer that he teaches us in this Sermon on the Mount, that we can pull from the treasures of heaven and we can actually bring light into dark times. We can fill our mind with the thoughts of eternity, the thoughts of heaven, the realizing that heaven is not afraid. Heaven is not without. Heaven is full of resources of peace and joy and kindness. 
So we can turn to our Father in prayer and make an investment in intimacy. And we can listen not to the Father of lies, but we can listen to our Father in heaven. Let's not listen to the deceiver. Let's not listen to his words. Let's put his volume down. Let's change the channel in our mind and actually go to God for answers. Jesus tells us to go into the inner room to pray in this intimate space of connection with the Father. He calls this the inner chamber or the storehouse. Your soul is like a storehouse, a place where we can keep all our desires, wishes, and deepest thoughts. But the Father has for us a storehouse too. He has for us a treasure room. And as we open up the doors of prayer and the storehouses of our hearts, the treasure room of heaven can fill our storehouse. Our storehouse right now is going to be empty, just like we're seeing photos across the web of grocery stores and Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, this empty, empty stock, and the world is freaking out. It's just, will we have enough? Will we have enough? The heaven storeroom. Let me tell you right now, God's heaven room is full of everything you need, emotionally, spiritually, your thoughts. He's got unlimited stockpiles of what you need emotionally. Yes, physically, we might have some needs and we're going to, might go through some suffering times. But let me tell you, friend, he has a storehouse to get you through. In Psalm 31 verse 19, it says, Lord, how wonderful you are. You have stored up so many good things for us, like a treasure chest heaped up and spilling over with blessings, all for those who honor and worship you. As you continue to honor him and worship him, he has a storehouse of life and joy and peace, even in troubled times. James 1 verse 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. We live in a time right now where things are shifting and changing. It's like we're not sure what's going to happen. There's so much unknown. But as we look to him, he will give us the gifts we need. He will give us the peace that we need. And your Father who sees all you do will reward you openly. Let's seek Him and He'll reward us. When you commune with God in the secret place, He doesn't hide His goodness from you. He wants to open up His treasure room and He wants to welcome us into the intimacy of prayer. So let's talk about how to pray. He teaches us right there in the Sermon on the Mount. We learn the Beatitudes. We learn how to be, have that inner happiness. We learn how to be salt and light. But now let's talk about and break down the, the, the prayer of the disciples as they asked Jesus, how do we pray? And he says this first, he says, this is how you pray, our Father. When Jesus tells us to call out to our Father, it's already revolutionary that we would call God our Abba Father. They, they would have been shocked at this news that they can have such an intimate relationship. It's not just my dad, but our dad, our Father. So even though we're in separate rooms now and, and people are feeling isolated, He's still our Father. We're still a family, even though people have been quarantined, even though the city has been sectioned off. And so we need to understand that, that He's our Father. Yes, He's a personal Father to you, but we're in this together. And He's looking out for all His children, no matter how hard it's getting. But also, we enter into His gates with thanksgiving, as Psalm 100 verse 4 says. So we begin our prayer with praises, which seems kind of counterintuitive, right? Because what can we praise God for? We're in this dire situation. But our praises are not based on our circumstances. They're based on His character. They're based on His name and who He is. And so who He is to us and where He sits and what he speaks of in terms of his authority and his power is above what we're facing. And so we enter in knowing with praise and thanksgiving that he is above everything else. We also pray knowing that his heavenly kingdom, our, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So we're lifting him up. We're glorifying his name above coronavirus. We're lifting his name above the situations. We're lifting up his name above our fear, above our thoughts, above what's going on, whether we have relatives or friends that have the virus and we're, we're scared about what's happening in the government and the media. But we lift up our heavenly father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. So his reign needs to come here on earth. Not the reign of fear, not the reign of the enemy, not 
all these other voices, but your kingdom, God. You, this is your earth. This, this life, your life, make him the king of your life in this time. See, when we have Christ in us, we are meant to be the meeting place of heaven and earth. We are that gateway together, the church, each individual and together. We are the meeting place of heaven and earth. What an amazing thing. This is what it means when he says our body is a temple in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. And when we pray, we have the ability to re release heaven into our surroundings. So not, we're not just praying, hallowed be your name, but we're praying also, Lord, even in this dark time, your kingdom come. You know, it's interesting, like thinking back to 9-11 and other tragic events that have happened in our city, that that's when people start to think, what is life really about? Like, what are we hoping in? And so we can hope in who God is. We can hope in His kingdom. And so I, I want to let you know that even though this is going on, and that we're surrounded by what seems like a lot of difficult situations. We can be salt and light. We can look to His kingdom. We can bring His kingdom here on earth. I love Matthew 18, verse 18. It says, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Let's loose joy. Let's loose freedom. Let's loose the peace of God. Let's make that our prayer. Yes, we might feel like the disease is outside our control and it's spreading and financial markets are crashing and oh my gosh, what are we going to do? But I'm telling you right now, we can loose joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, patience. The faithfulness of God can be loose through your prayers. Don't let your mouth be silent. Don't let the rocks cry out. You begin to pray, even now where you're watching, begin to seek God and lift up the name of Jesus and bring down the kingdom of heaven into your apartment, into the place where you are right now, wherever you are. So we're going to co-labor together. We're going to collaborate together. He loves bringing about His kingdom through our prayers, through our obedience. He loves being co-laborers with us. He's going to meet all of our needs as well. I love that. Give us our daily bread. These are physical needs, but also our spiritual needs. See, Jesus is our manner, our daily bread. At the Last Supper, He broke bread with His disciples and offered it. He said, we are in communion now with the Spirit of Jesus. So we have access for our spiritual needs, our peace, our comfort, our hope that needs to be met. There's a, also a flow of mercy Maybe we've said things or we've gotten anxious or even done things and fallen into temptation. Even this week, maybe, maybe we're going to substances or other things. But let me tell you, there's forgiveness. Don't, don't go further into a dark hole. Don't go further into looking at things on a screen or, or finding hope in dark places. Come back to Jesus. Give your life back. Let's repent of these things and let's let the forgiveness and the mercy of God flow into our life. I, I love this because we can also pass forgiveness to one another. It says, but if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Meaning our forgiveness is connected to forgiving others in our marriages, in our friendships, across our church, across the city. Maybe there's people doing things and taking things and you, you feel a bit nervous about what's happening in, in the city and in, in your area right now. Well, let me tell you, we can be different. Jesus was so amazing because he relied on the Holy Spirit and the love of his Father. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Even in them taking the very life of divine, perfect blood, he forgave them. We now have access to that same forgiveness. And so let's not be a swamp. Let's be a river of mercy. Let's love our enemies. Let's love people that are even maybe taking things or, or, or not being kind in our city. And there's crime rising and all sorts of things happening. But I believe and I prophesy that we will be people of mercy and kindness and show a different way. We ask for forgiveness and we're asking for God to unleash mercy that washes through us and around us. That this could be a time where people turn back to God. They repent and come back to Him. I love that this prayer then leads us into the leadership of God. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What a powerful prayer in this time that we would not give in to the enemy's ways, give in to the, to the darkness and the fear and let that tempt us into a different way, but rather say, God, 
You lead us. God, you're our leader in this time. Not fear, not the father of lies, not, not the media and everyone else. We are led by Jesus. We need the Lordship over our lives. We need to ask him for his help out of temptation to not fall into the trap that the enemy's uh, surrounding us with. When Jesus prayed in the garden, he prayed not for his will, but for the Father's will. And this is how he ends the prayer. Not my will, but your will be done. That his will through this difficult time, through this challenging time, our prayer would be that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm not sure what kind of things you're facing, but I know God's will is for you. And even though you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, you can fear no evil because he is with you. He is the great shepherd. He is the great leader of our lives. So I pray in my own life, in, in Georgie's life, in my boy's life, in my staff, my team, a whole church and a whole city. Why don't we just pray right now? Father God, thank you, Jesus, that you're in control. Our Father who art in heaven, we look to you. We're part of your family. And Lord, we think of those that don't yet know you. We pray that in this time they would sense your presence and your love and they also would cry out, our Father. And Lord, we pray right now that your name would be lifted up that we would look to you as a city and as a nation uh, and as a world. We want to repent, God, of looking to every other name but yours. And if it takes this moment for us to look to you, then so be it. But God, I pray right now that we wouldn't let this moment pass by and just live in fear, but rather see that you are the way, the truth and the life through this difficult time. And Father, I thank you that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right now, personally, for every single person watching, Lord, for any gathering of friends or family, Lord, across this beautiful planet, this beautiful earth, we ask for your kingdom and your reign of peace. I thank you, Jesus, right now. Protect our church, protect our people, but also we pray for your protection in life to flow into every part of our city and everyone we know and do not know. Lord, we thank you so much that you're leading us through this time and we give you glory and we give you praise and let your will be done. Not our will, but your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you, church. I hope and pray that you're encouraged. We're standing with you in this time. Reach out if you need anything and let's continue to pray and fast and believe together. Amen.